Thank you, thank you. We're very lucky. We got lucky with this one. Did you get lucky? Because I think you really put your heart into it. You made magic happen. <laughs> we we did. We worked we worked really hard on the show, but a lot of like things had to come together for it to work. And, and one of those things is, is the casting of the show and, and Damon and Clay being able to kind of reprise the roles played by Mel Gibson and Danny Glover in such a great way. You know, we got very, very lucky with that one because you don't have the two guys. I remember when I was first talking about doing the reboot and I sat down with Richard Donner who directed all four of them and I was telling him what I wanted to do and the storylines and all that and he said, none of that matters. If you don't have the two guys, there's no scene. So that was the first part of it. And we got who did you cast first? I cast Damon first. So the first person that came into the show, so Peter Roth, who runs Warner Brothers, knew Damon from Living Color when uh, Peter was running for Fox. So he set us up and we had lunch. And uh, I, I told Damon what I wanted to do, and, uh, and I, I hadn't read it, and I left him with a script, and I said, you know, give it, read, let me know what you think. And I got a text at 6 a.m. the next morning, he's just like, I'm in. And, uh, which was awesome. And I was like, oh, this is going to be super easy. I got Damon, I'll find a rig, we're in business. And then it was like three months of just like hell. We auditioned like hundreds, hundreds of guys in LA, in New York, in Canada, in London, in Australia, this Mel Gibson thing. And we just couldn't find anyone to play a role because everybody, like on some level, was doing like a kind of poor man's Mel Gibson, even if they didn't realize they were doing it. And then we found Clayne like on a farm in Alabama. How did you find Clayne on a farm in Alabama? It was, it was, I don't know, who, I think one of the casting directors uh, knew obviously Clayne and his work. And he'd just come off the show Rectify. And so uh, they showed us, you know, his reel and his tape. And we were just like, who is that guy? And then Clayne flew out and he was like, I don't know, do I want to do a remake? And like, what's this thing going to be like? And we all sort of decided that we were taking on roles that other people had done really famously. So for him it was Mel Gibson, for Damon it was Danny Glover, for me as a writer it was Shane Black who wrote the, the original movie, uh, Mick G who directed it, and we said like we're going to do with something that's a little bit different and something that we feel like we would want to watch and we'd be proud of. Uh, so that's what we did and, and you know hopefully it worked out. So when you say you wanted to do something that was a little bit different, yeah, yeah. what do you mean by that? I mean that like we wanted to make Lethal Weapon, but it wasn't as if I felt like we had to do every single story point and every single character exactly the way that they had done it in the, in the, in the movie franchise. You know, we wanted to kind of reset it a little bit. So we have Riggs, who's coming from Texas to Los Angeles, that makes him a little bit of a fish out of water. We wanted to get a little bit more into the backstory of his dead wife. For Murtaugh, he's come off of open heart surgery in the pilot. Uh, and he had just had a new kid, so he has two kids, a new baby, he's just had open heart surgery, and his wife makes a lot of money. So it put him in a position of like, I don't have to do this. And then he had to sort of contemplate what it means to kind of be a man, was like my idea for the show, that, that in some way that that's sort of the soul of the original one. It's like this kind of love story between two guys, but it's about them dealing with like, what does it mean to be a man? And, uh, and that's sort of the, the issues and the themes that they're wrestling with. Are so loyal to the original. Yeah, yeah. I know. And there are skeptics. It's yes. a Hollywood remake. Yeah. What would you say to the people who are a little hesitant to question it? Yeah, I, I think that that's with good reason because we've all had movies or even TV shows that we've loved and were such a big part of our childhood or whatever point in life we were. And it feels like don't touch that. Like that's perfect the way that it is, and I don't want I don't want anyone to destroy that memory that I have. And to those people, I would say, give this a shot. And it is not the same thing as those beloved franchise movies that you have, but it's its own different thing in the same way that like maybe Friday Night Lights did a really great job of capturing the spirit of the movie, but then they turned it into a really successful TV show. The same thing with Fargo. And it's not about it being exactly the same story, but it's about taking the soul and the spirit of what, what you liked about it and trying to put that into a TV show. In understanding that, what made you confident that you could do that, that you could protect oh, that I, lethal weapon I, I, from those I, fans? I had no confidence that I could do it. It was it, it was it all sort of came in a, in a weird way. Where Warner Brothers had asked me about doing reboots of other shows that I of other movies that I didn't think were good ideas. And in a way to just sort of end the conversation, I said, "Look, the one title you guys have, if you're asking me what I really want to do, is Lethal Weapon." And they were like, well, you can't have Lethal Weapon for like 30 different reasons. I was like, I get it, I get it. But you're asking me if there's something that I truly loved and could put my soul into, that would be the kind of thing. 
and they said that under no circumstances could I have a lethal weapon. And then through a weird set of circumstances, my phone rang like two days later and they were like, we just got your lethal weapon. And so I was completely panicked because I had no idea what I would do with it. But now I had lethal weapon and so I didn't really have time to think or to be nervous. It was like I had to immediately start, come up with the pitch, go to the networks, go to Fox, pitch it to them, and we were just sort of off and running from there. Well, you are up and running. We're so excited for season two. Anything you can tell us in sneak peeks? Um, I feel like season one was very much about the story of Briggs and mourning the death of his wife. And, and season two, we totally reset his backstory and a totally new mythology in season two that I think is going to surprise a lot of people. We're on the set of Lethal Weapon. I'm Matt Miller, executive producer of Lethal Weapon, and we're here with Fab TV. I love Fab TV. Thank you guys for watching.